When the Soviet Union was near to collapse, emerging leaders of its various states wanted a North American liberal arts education in English for their next generations. A small group of friends recognized the possibilities of this historic moment and in 1991 planted LCC International University near the Baltic coast of Lithuania. Uh, my name is Alexei. I'm from Ukraine, Zaporizhia. Hello, my name is Hanna Salahuk, and I come from Belarus. My name is Davis. I'm from Latvia. Uh, my name is Dana, Dana Zolsha. I'm from Kazakhstan. Hello, my name is Kirill Lagapov, and I'm from Russia. My name is Anton, and uh, I'm from Kyrgyz Republic. And these students are the first generation born after their countries gained their freedom. Uh, in the countries that are coming from uh, Soviet, uh, kind of lifestyle. It is very important to have the school with strong emphasis on relationships and integrity because uh, it's something our people really need and something that they almost never can see in their own countries. LCC International University is a learning community that does more than educate students. It transforms the lives of everyone involved. I mean, I know it sounds really, you know, transforming lives, but this is what happened to me. But the example that's shown here is marvelous. And you want to follow those people, even if, you don't, even if you don't believe in God. There is no really other place in Eastern Europe, maybe in the world, that could really change you as a person, as a student, as a devoted Christian, and as a professional as well. How? It restores the hope of freedom after centuries of cruel oppression in this region of the world. Lithuania's story is typical of many former Soviet states. Once an autonomous nation, Lithuania was overtaken by neighboring Tsarist Russia in the 1700s. In 1812, when Napoleon's army engaged Russia in battle, Lithuanians could only hope that a Russian defeat might signal their own liberation. When France withdrew, Tsar Nicholas I tightened his grip, initiating deportations, closing universities, censoring religion, even banning the language. Ultimately, citizens were granted permission to use their own language, but this gain was overshadowed by the onset of World War I and Germany's occupation. During World War II, the Soviet Union took Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Germany attacked and seized control. Back came the Soviets. When the tug of war was over, negotiations between Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin placed the region in Soviet hands. The country's intelligentsia fled to the West. Lithuania lost 30% of its population to death, deportation, and emigration. At last, many voices, political and religious world leaders and grassroots resistance, created a providential tipping point of positive transformation. The seeds of independence and democratic reform were sown. Lithuania gained its sovereignty on September 6, 1991, the same year LCC opened its doors. I've been involved with LCC since the very start of the institution, since the very start of uh, Summer Institute, Winter Institute, then uh, the college and eventually with the university. So this wind of change that that's blowing today is actually a symbol of what's been happening for 22 years now. So we were actually invited to be a challenge to the system, not to be part of the system, but to challenge the system, both in terms of ethics, the, uh, the nature of education, the, the way things are taught. Its founders located it in Klaipeda, Lithuania, on the Baltic Sea. When this location emerged, I had the feeling that it had a chance to survive. It was far enough west that people could get into it, uh, both in terms of travel and understanding it. Other schools started in the Ukraine or east of Moscow and didn't survive. There is something about life in Lithuania that is vibrant. The people are absolutely wonderful. And the school brings in people from so many different countries in the region. And we're reaching into so many parts of the world that you can't really do in a North American setting. LCC International University gives students who are future leaders 
the genuine hope of transforming life in their country. My very first year, I thought that I will finish this school and go somewhere west and make a lot of money. That was the goal. <laughs> in four years, it changed. and I'm going home, and I like entrepreneurship, and I, and I want to start something. It's, I think with knowledge I got here, and with God's help, I will do something. Well, my initial plan when I was entering LCC was to get out of my country. But through the course of studying here and discovering God and getting into a deeper relationship with Him, last year I felt like He's calling me back to my own country, to Belarus, which is going to be very challenging for me. I mean, in a lot of universities, there are no subjects like corporate social responsibility. And right now I have this class and I think it's really amazing and I can apply it for business and it's, it's just awesome, I like it. Great this choice so far in my life that I came here to study and I think that I found myself. I feel myself like like at home, you know, like um, in my family. And I had a great experience um, and changes in my life. Because I studied here, because I met people who believe in the mission of LCC, because I met great Christians from around the world and they all shaped me. Now, when I go back to the world, I hope, and I do believe so, I shape people around me. Christianity is best taught by example. And for me, as a young Christian woman, even to imagine myself as a Christian professor, as a leader, it all came from my imagination that got expanded here by meeting strong women who were definitely gifted teachers, who were gifted preachers, and I was like, Wow, this is who I want to become, yes. <laughs> Just show me one LCC person who goes, you know, with his eyes down on the pavement. None of them does that. They've got a very strong backbone. And this backbone has been created by the LCC community, by the teachers who come over with this, uh, with this conviction that that's how I live and that's how you have to live. You have the right to live that, like that. For 22 years, visionary leaders in Lithuania have promoted a return to Christian thinking and Christian values to make up the moral deficit of the Soviet years. Because LCC as a university is a bit different from the, our state universities. And this difference is uh, it's very uh, friendly and based on Christian values, for me, as a city mayor, is very important. I think that the LCC University's attention was in Klaipeda. It was like the place where we were going to meet at the San Kauno. I had probably three times the opportunity to meet in, in Klaipeda, right here in Vilnius, and I saw the very enthusiastic young student body and uh, people who definitely were open-minded and I am extremely pleased and happy that Lithuania is part of it, has the opportunity to learn directly from the people who has the experience, who know the principles of it, and the most important, the values. Patraukė taip pat in etapo kaip vienintis centras tarp visų dominacijų krikščioniškų bažnyčių. To, ko mes, mes sakom, nelabai galbūt galitumėm pasigirti, kas vyksta kitose miestuose. Bet saku, vat, universitetas LCC, jisai tikrai labai, mes sakom, pasūdė Evangelijos dvose visą šitą kraštą. To this day, through the support of committed friends, LCC International University has fulfilled its promise towards its students and the region. On people that were um, uh, teaching uh, were very down-to-earth, very respectful and very optimistic of what can happen. I guess the belief that God can change a person, uh, that really helped me to, to go into leadership and, uh, and think of myself differently. And I was so touched by realizing that God really loved me so much that He even created a whole university for me because I needed it so badly. And I am sure that there are many young people now that need, need that school as badly as I did. The word that comes to my mind when I hear about LCC is community. Sometimes we, it's hard to accept someone because we don't know the background, we don't know their families, we don't know their countries where they came from. So LCC 
is like a foundation, like a place where we can meet these people and we can expand our minds and our understanding of, of the world, cultures, of faith and everything else. What I also like about LCC, and that is what I'm telling parents in this region, that this is a corruption-free learning community. That value cannot be overestimated. It's the relationships between faculty and students that sets us apart, uh, that our faculty care about the students as individuals and not just as students in a desk in the classroom, but that their offices are available and open for conversation, and that is a distinctive for LCC, sets us apart in this region. The friendliness, the communal learning, the learning with the students as the students learn from the teachers, we learn from them, we learn together. I'm in my 12th year now as a teacher, and what keeps us here is the students, our direct daily contact with students. I have four or five hours in today just with students. I think they're looking for authentic um, relationships with caring adults. As soon as you experience that, you start valuing that, and even right now, you cher I cherish the moments you know, of, of, of having those conversations with the teachers. Lithuania and many former Soviet nations are embracing LCC and its North American supporters as important friends and allies in a push towards Christian freedom for the next generation. Everything's changing, but at the same time, this liberal arts education keeps to, uh, keeps to something fundamental, something that has been discovered as lacking in other types of education during the great crisis of 2008. Whether you call it soft skills or you call it Christian leadership, whether you, whether you call it any other name, actually we are speaking about the same thing. We are speaking about human integrity. The human integrity that is at the basis of, of liberal arts education because this is the niche, this is the exceptional quality that LCC has. But actually this mix of uh, professors and staff that, that are teaching here and sharing their lives uh, create this uh, additional value where students can actually grasp the, the best parts from each culture and from each um, side of the world. And I think that's the important part because like every, every single person contributes here his own certain personality and values. You know, we're at the junction of East and West, we're a junction of different educational systems. And I think that, uh, that they have to understand we are not transplanting a Canadian or American school here. We are taking things that we have learned in North America and that work in North America, and we are implementing them over here. So I think that people need to engage in the idea of why are you here and how do you make a difference here. Today, another window of opportunity has opened for you to be part of this extraordinary time in history. We're participating in what God's already doing. So it is a chance for ministry and service, but also a learning experience. And every person who comes to LCC, and I talk to many of them, they leave changed. Even people who do not accept Christ, they leave changed. I work with them, I know. They are different. The word that they consistently use is the word transformation. At first I thought maybe transformation for the students. But what we've noticed is an amazing transformation among the faculty that come. We see transformed lives in our donors, in people interested in LCC. What is the bottom line, really? And uh, it's our own growth and maturing as we have watched these students and been part of this project. So we're really rich because we've been part of this. We've really come, not as tourists, but as pilgrims, to see a sacred place and to engage in understanding the sorrows and the joys of the people in this region. And I think more than ever, the West has not understood this region and even Russia and the impact of a secular atheistic imprint on society. And for everyone I bring, they're so grateful to have their hearts, their minds expanded. So I would say what North Americans need now is to understand the world more deeply, to care more deeply, to pray more inten intensively, 
um, and as God leads them to give more generously.